What's up, everybody? TJ here. Real quick before we get started with the episode, I'm testing out a new feature called Fan Mail, which is where you can actually text me from the episode that you're listening to. So as you're listening to this, go over to the episode description and right there at the beginning, you're going to see some text that says, send me a text message. Go ahead, click that. Let me know what you think about the podcast so far. Let me know of any questions, concerns, anything you might have. I love to hear from you. So go ahead, hit that up. I'm excited to read your text and let's get started with the episode. I will ensure your success as long as you give me three things, dedication, commitment, and sacrifice. Those three things are what I need from you, and I'm going to give you everything I have. Welcome to the Keep the Promise podcast, where we help build resilient and well-rounded firefighters. What's up, everybody? It's TJ. Today, I have the honor of interviewing, honestly, a hell of a role model within the fire service and the fire service fitness industry. It's my buddy Julian Serrano from South Florida who goes by the name The Firefighter Coach and runs a company called Prepare to Fight Fire. We actually became friends while Keep the Promise was launching, and we've been bouncing ideas off of each other. And he has an awesome program that helps aspiring firefighters get to that point of attending the academy, performing well at the academy, succeeding at the academy, and then maintaining that baseline fitness throughout their career. So a mover and shaker in the business, I am super humbled to have him here. Julian, thank you so much for joining me, brother. How are you? Good, man. Thank you so much for having me. It's always an honor to be able to share a story and bring some insight, motivation, and just just realism in this world that uh, is, uh, how do I say this correctly? Um, talk. I'll just put it at that. <laughs> <laughs> we can, yeah, we can leave it at that. So yeah. let's start off with with your origin story, if you will. What um. Why'd you become a firefighter? What led you there? Yeah, so I, I became a firefighter solely because ever since I was a little kid, uh, I wanted to be a firefighter. Um, I, I had a, a couple role models growing up. Um, some of my dad's best friends were, uh, were were chiefs. And, you know, growing up, we used to always hang out together and, and I would see them all dressed up. I'd hear the radio going off. You know, they were chiefs and they had their own take-home cars and stuff like that. And I just... I, that's what I wanted to do, man. I go on, going through high school, I was playing football and my coach, I'm a big dude. I'm six, two. And in high school, I was probably two ten. Um, and my coach is super hell bent on me playing football. And I'm like, no, I want to be a fireman. And, uh, he's like, all right, well, you know, you can still go to college. I'm like, no, you don't, you don't get it. I want to be a fireman. Like, that's, that's what I want. The, the arrogance I had was you didn't get, need, need to get good grades. I was a jock skated by high school because, you know, in my eyes, you don't need good grades to be a fireman. So I, uh, I had this, this vision of what I wanted. And along the way, I, I, I had some obstacles. Uh, one being I broke my ankle, um, January of my senior year. So coming into graduation and I gained about probably 75 pounds. So I know I got up to a point where I was almost 300 pounds. I was like 290, 295. And I went to EMT school, which you don't need to be in shape for that. And then after EMT school, I attempted fire school. And not many people know that through that attempt, I, I failed out, right? I uh, didn't meet a terminal objective. And due to my fitness, due to my mindset, I was uh, deemed incapable of finishing the drill and I was sent home, right? I attended the Florida State Fire College, which I uh, attribute all my success to because they hold the standard and they don't break the standard for anybody. Um, and with that, I came home to the realization of, well, what do I do when all I wanted to do was be a firefighter and I just got told I can't be a firefighter, right? Very young in, in my in my maturity and, and the way I was thinking, the way I was able to process things. And uh, I got hired at an ambulance company and went to a really low spot. I mean, just depressed, um, just terrible. Binge watching TV, uh, eating like shit, probably gained some more weight. And, uh, so this importance of, of obviously having a father and, um, you know, having somebody that that's the standard as well. He said, listen, you're not going to just work and s sit at home. Like you're going to go back to school. You're going to go back to fire school or you're going to go to the military. Um, you're not going to work for this ambulance company forever. Like I'm not going to allow it. And, um, 
you know, a couple couple months later, I made a decision. One night, I, I went up to these, I, I got up to these restroom and I looked at myself in the mirror and it was like 2 a.m. And I was disgusted with the guy I saw in the reflection. And and this is something that people need to hear. Like, we're so fast in life. We move all the time. We rarely stop and look at ourselves in the mirror. Like, truly look at ourselves, look at the person. Like, look who you, like, who, who is the person in the mirror? Like, who really are you? And I'd say 90% of people are not happy with that person. Well, I made a decision that night that, this is going to change, right? I never wanted to live a mediocre life. And I was on that trajectory to be as mediocre as they come. And from then on out, man, I, I made the decision of going back to the fire school. I failed out. I'm going to prove everybody up there, including myself, that I have what it takes. And I'm going to show up ready. I'm going to show up prepared. And I trained in gear every day until I went back to fire school. Um, and yeah, that's kind of my, my story coming into the fire service. Um, so it was a bumpy road uh, getting in. But, you know, nonetheless, I was blessed that I did pretty well in fire school. One of the instructors obviously remembered me, um, and I actually got picked up a couple weeks after fire school uh, right there in the local town that uh, I went out to fire school to. It was about three hours away from home and uh, started my career there in Ocala, Florida. So, Yeah, because, well, I there's a lot to unpack here, right? So for those of us here in the Northeast, I mean, I know when, when I went through the academy, I it was as an employee of a department already, right? They hire you, they send you through the academy. For you guys, you have to actually go through an academy, like you said, before getting picked up. That's that's something that's kind of foreign to all of us. So I feel like you have that extra pressure, right? You have to perform very, very well in order to pretty much get drafted, right? Well, yeah, it's one of those things in Florida, you need your, your minimum requirements. Um, I know across the country, everybody's uh, qualifications are different from each, each department. The only department in the state um, that I know of, I could be wrong, but I think it's Miami-Dade in Florida that will hire you as a civilian and put you through EMT and fire school. So, uh, but everybody else, you, you the minimum you need to apply to the department is your firefighter one and two standards and then your EMT national certification. Um, so that kind of weeds out the people. And it, it, the beautiful thing about Florida is we we get compensated very well. We have great benefits. Um, it's really a great place to work, as far as you know, as the fire service taking taking classes, going to conferences across the world. It makes you realize what you have. So it's it's a professional job. Like we we are professionals. I think we're professionals across all of the fire service, volunteer included. Um, but when, when when guys are making a lot of money to do the same job that volunteers are doing. I think there's a, a different level of standard, if that makes sense. Unfortunately, um, I think the standard should be the same across the board. So when someone calls 911, they get the same level of service. But you and I both know that's not true. Yeah. Um, and don't don't misunderstand my words. We have individuals that take the job lightly and aren't committed to being the best firefighter showing up to somebody's worst day. Yeah, yeah. And I think paid or volunteer, we both have experiences with those folks who are either just there for a paycheck or there for the t-shirt and paid and volunteer the folks who show up and they give it all, whether they're getting a paycheck at the end of the day or not. And and they're doing it for the community. And I can attest right. to, um, to how you guys did things in Florida. Cause when I went to college at Embry riddle, I try to keep on volunteering like I had been doing in Maryland and I try to do it in Volusia County. And I'm just, I'm looking at the course load and the things I had to do that. I was like, you know what? This is insane. I should probably finish my degree before I try to volunteer in a new state. So that just tells you how much work goes into getting your basic, getting your minimums to um to be allowed to even like play within the fire service. But I want to go back to that episode where you looked in the mirror because right you you were at your at your lowest. You made that decision and like you said it was a bumpy road. That has to help out a lot with being able to relate to the people that you work with, right? Because you're getting everybody all over the spectrum in terms of fitness, in terms of mindset. You have that that experience. You have been there. You have been in the darkness. How do you harness that to get your folks to perform well and, and to change their mind and to start building those habits to be better? You know what? Uh, it, it's It's honestly hard. It's, 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 it's a blessing and it's a curse at the same time. And I'll tell you why 
I have zero tolerance for excuses and bullshit. Um, I just do not believe everything we say is real. So if you are talking in a negative mind for, mindset, negative uh, you know frame of mind, that's your that's your life. You live a negative life. You're always the victim. And nothing's ever fair, and everybody it's everybody else's fault. It's never yours, right? So I was that guy, but I think from getting out of that space and then just unleashing, you know, which I think I've only scratched the surface truly of who I am and what I'm capable of. I just have lost the empathy for people who make excuses for people who are a victim and for people who create their own box and they live in that box instead of living in the, the world we live in. At least I know I can speak for America that is full of opportunity and, and nothing but opportunity. Now, are people's opportunities different depending on who you are, where you live, your upbringing, you know, your skin color, your gender, all of these things? Yes, every, everything is different, but you still have opportunity compared to other places on planet Earth where you have no opportunity. There's no out, right? And I just, I have lost complete empathy for people who make excuses, for people who don't even try. You know what I mean? And, and, and I got a phone this morning with one of, one of my clients and she was telling me that, you know, it's going to be impossible to go to fire school because of X, Y, and Z certain Oh no. I said, well, yeah, you're right. You should just stop what you're doing. And she was like, what do you mean? I'm like, yeah, just, just stop. Like stop going to EMT school. Like it's impossible. Right. She's like, no, uh, I just got to find a way. I go, well, if you use impossible and you speak it out loud, right? I'm a big believer in the, in the power of the spoken word. You are now creating a reality for yourself. It's not real, but in your mind, and in your life, it is because you just spoke it out loud. I go, let's remove all negativity and all the, the, the toxic, you know, vocabulary, even if it is true, even if it is like, it doesn't even look like we can make it happen. If you want something bad enough in life, you will find a way. I don't care if the devil or Jesus comes down and gets in your way. Us as humans have the ability to relentlessly pursue whatever it is we want. Even if you are an individual from a place on earth that doesn't have that opportunity. I believe that if you have, if you want it, you can get it no matter who you are. Right. Um, so that's, that's my mindset. So yeah, I, I, I can relate. And, and I, I really can relate, but I think empathy only takes you so far. You know what I mean? And, and I'm, I'm a special individual. I'm not. And, and I told this person the other day too, this other client that I was, I was onboarding. I, I told him, I said, Hey, I'm going to give you a full refund. I'm not the coach for you because there was nothing but excuses and just negative behavior. You know what I mean? And to the point where I could not put up with that, you know, like there's only so much there's only, I can only be so empathetic, you yeah. know, before it's like, okay, this is, I, I can't help. You, <laughs> you don't know, have to want just, to help yourself. Right. Right. Exactly. You know, so, um, so yeah, but I have been there. People forget, nor do they really know that I have been there. You know, they see the guy now, which is funny, nine years into my career with a business, with a couple classes that are pretty elite, in the fire service with being an ultra runner with having a beautiful wife, all these things. But like, like, you know, my message now to everybody is like, it takes time. Like it takes time. Like stop worrying about the end. You're about the now. You know what I mean? Like the now is, this is your climax. Like we always think the end is the climax. No, right now is your climax. This is, this is your highlight right now, right? One day you might have something that's bigger or better, but right now this is all you got. And you need to make it the best you can make it, you know? Yeah, that's that's an awesome mindset. And I know you and I have spent a lot of time talking about business and talking about the slow, steady grind and growth. So it's important to note that like your thought process is do the hard work now and understand that it's going to take time. It's going to take a year, five years, a decade, but on a long enough time horizon, right? If you keep putting in the work, if you get keep putting in the reps, you will succeed and you will surpass what you thought was impossible. And then you'll set new goals. You'll keep moving that goalpost, if you will. Right. Yeah. hundred percent. It'll, it'll just keep moving. 
and I, I can attest to the 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 truth of achieving your goals and thinking that it's going to be this fulfillment that lasts a lifetime. I've achieved some pretty stout things, some pretty amazing things, and you're the human psyche is just it's literally like engineered to move past whatever you endure or achieve like once once you've hit that threshold it's like okay what's next like immediately like nothing left, no feeling lasts forever right and when it comes to accomplishments or achieving what you want understand that no matter how hard you think it is like you stick with it you'll achieve it but then like you've got to be able to transition to the next thing and you're going to look at the next mountain and i've actually been living my life recently with the mindset of I don't even look what's ahead of me anymore. Like now the, the goal is, is just to get on a road with a shovel, a dirt road, and start moving dirt out of the way, creating my own path, right? And one day when I, when I get to the end of my life, I'll look back, right? That's when I'll look back and I'll see a beautiful city that I've built by just moving dirt, right? Moving dirt, just tossing it behind. And that'll be the fulfillment that I, I think is is the purpose of this life journey is the work you do along the way will eventually build something that's amazing, but it's it's going to take a lot of time. So uh, patience is hard, man. Um, it, it really is, especially people who are eager, who are uh, really, really, really hungry. It, it's tough because you want stuff under your timeline. Um, but if you got everything under your timeline, you blow you you, you blow it away. I promise you. You. You mess it up in some sort of fashion. Um, and it's funny how life works. Most of the stuff that takes time, it really just takes maturity. And the time develops that maturity. So, Powerful, powerful words, dude. That's awesome. Yeah. So um, just a little mindset. So, <laughs> No, dude, I, I love the mindset. And, and I'm definitely going to explore some more of that as, as we go on. But you hit on something. Tell me about some of these elite classes, because I have an idea what what at least one of them is going to be, and I kind of want to want to grill you on it because I'm very interested. Yeah, so uh, the the most elite class that I've taken is um, the Smoke Diver program here in Florida, and um, when I say elite, I mean um, it, it. When you become a firefighter, I think your academy and whatever department you go through, including fire academy, is is elite. You know, that's that's a tough eight to 12 weeks for anybody across the country. Um, so that in itself, you know, depending on where you go and what department you work for is elite. Um, and I put that up there with the first department I worked for and then the second department I worked for. And then, you know, obviously um, certain classes, um, but this spe specific class that changed my life and changed my career forever is um, for Smoke Diver Program. It's a uh, program that was designed in... Um, in the 70s when the uh, breathing apparatus was invented and put on fire trucks. A couple guys down here said, we need to master this device uh, or this piece of equipment rather and understand its limit capabilities and how far we can actually go using it inside fires, how hot we can get in that, in that nature. So, uh, you know, I attended that program in uh, 2019 and uh it just it changed my life. We started with, I think it was 23 people. We graduated with three. And um, it's a sixth program held at the Fire College here in Ocala. And uh, it was it was outstanding. It was extremely difficult. It was uh, long. Uh, but it was it's one of those things where you can't focus on the end. Like, like we've been talking about, you got to focus with what's it right in front of you. Um, and once you get through that, you got to focus on what lies ahead, you know, like what, what, what presents itself next. So, um, but that program changed my life. The, the dedication I had to training for that program, the, uh, the, the, the events that led up to the program, you know, also changed my life. I lost one of my, one of my good friends to suicide. And, um, you know, that, that was heavy as well. So yeah, man, that, uh, that, that class, you know, I consider it in, in my perspective. Um, this is my, this is Julian Strong's opinion, elite. Uh, in, in the fire service and um it's elite in my eyes because of the you know curriculum and the demand of or the standard set throughout the program 
Um, it's, 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 there's no slack. There's no bargaining. Um, it's, it's black and white, very simple. So there's very few things in the world that are black and white anymore. And, uh, and, and that, that, that program really is an upgrade for it. So I found out the other day that apparently Maryland had a smoke diver program back in the late eighties. It, okay. um, it went away, but so like I, I keep up with, with Florida, with Georgia, with Indiana. Uh, I have a friend who went through Mississippi and it's fascinating. Like number one, the attrition rate, you just said you started with 20 some and he finished with three. That is insane. And yeah. that is not some HR bound program that says like, no, 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 let's just, just push him through. It's fine. You did not meet the standard. Goodbye. Right. And that, that's the beautiful thing of, uh, of it being a, a class, right? Is that it's not governed by a city or a, a county, right? Right. It's, 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 it's it, it operates under a different set of rules. Um, and you know, it's, it's one of those things. It's not for everybody, but I believe everybody should attempt it because even in the attempt, you become a better firefighter. You have no choice. The amount of time you're going to spend in gear, the amount of time you're going to spend training physically, mentally, you will show up a better firefighter, a better person, a better husband, a better wife for just attempt because of the level of commitment it takes just to show up. You know what I mean? Oh, um, absolutely. But it's, it's special. It's very special. And I think, I think some people get their head wrapped around the wrong thing of, uh, you know, it's a bravado thing or it's a, it's a chest thump. Um, and part of it is, I'm going to be honest with you. Part of it is the reason being is if you do something outstanding, you should be very proud that you just did something outstanding. I don't care who you are. I don't care what you do. When, 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 when the NFL, when they win the Super Bowl, they go to Disney world, don't they? Like mm -hmm. it's a big deal. So when you win and, and let's, let's take this away from just that, that program, let's talk about life. When you win, you need to be confidently proud of the person that just won. Like you need to be proud of yourself. And it sounds so cliche, but like, that confidence is super important. That confidence will lead to you being able to get through anything in life because you know, no matter what, you're not going to quit. No matter what, you're going to move forward. And no matter what, you will come on top because you can't be the person that doesn't quit. It's that simple. Like it doesn't matter what, what phase or what arena you're in. If the person doesn't quit, they will always come out on top. The timeline might not be what you think. It might take a lot longer than you think. But I know plenty of people who were nobodies and then they turned into somebodies you know and it was the sole fact of they didn't quit on themselves and that's i think what society is lacking is we we quit on ourselves so fast and you're all you got to be honest with you because at the end of the day when, when the when the curtains closed it, it's 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 you you know you're, you're you and your thoughts are what's going to get you anywhere in life um yeah it's great to have a good tribe of people yeah it's great to keep good company those things are awesome but you have to show up as somebody that brings value to those people, to that tribe. You can't just expect like, oh, I'm going to be associated with a great group of people, but you're going to be a shit bag. Like that's selfish, you know? And, and at the same point, those great group of people are not going to associate themselves with somebody who doesn't even care enough to bring themselves up, right? To uh, try to be better every day. So, right. Uh, yeah, man, that's, uh, that's, that's my take on it. And, uh, and, and, and from the confidence standpoint, it's, it's needed. It, it's definitely needed. Uh, it's, it's a competitive course. Now we've gotten some, some really big reach on, uh, people coming in from all over. And, um, uh, you know, we, we have a process that is, uh, is, is excruciating. It's, it's, it's a process that really sees the people who train versus the people who are interested, you know? So it's, uh, it's, it's a great thing to be a part of to say the least. Oh yeah. And, and it, I guarantee you that going through that rewired your frame of thought and especially how you approach those people, not your clients and the mindset that, that you try to instill in them and the value that, that you try to provide to them. Because now you have firsthand experience, not just going through your struggles, but being able to look them in the eye and say like, listen, I went through one of these super tough elite courses where it's you your thought your ability to just put one foot in front of the other 
and you can do it too. You just got to get that your mind right. You you have to just not give up. And it's so much different having somebody who has been there, done that, as opposed to the gurus that we see all day, every day on TV and on the internet that you're like, can that person even do what they're talking about? Hey friends, I want to take a quick moment to ask you to support the show by leaving a rating and a review on your favorite platform. Your support means the world to us and it helps spread the message to even more people. We've gotten thousands and thousands of listeners and those high ratings help our show become more discoverable, allowing us to reach even more listeners and make an even greater impact. So if you've enjoyed what you heard so far, please take a moment to leave a rating and a review. It only takes a few seconds and it makes a huge difference. Thank you so much. And now let's get back to the show. Even the fire service we live in, there's there's this false sense of security that we're, we, we, we place ourselves, we, we, we show the world our highlight reel. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Yeah. And it, it's like, it's like uh, I don't know if you follow Deion Sanders. I'm a big fan of that guy. And uh, he, he goes, you know what's funny is you guys all look up to superstars. But you only see them two hours out of the week, right? So, what did we have? Steve, real quick, we have twenty four hours in a day. I'm, I'm terrible at math, so hold on a second. <laughs> I'm six, seven. So there's 168 hours in a week, and you see them for two hours, and you admire them for two hours. Could you imagine if those superstars, if you saw their life in its entirety? You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Um, you would realize that that they're a lot more flawed than even you are. And it's one of those things, man. It's like, you know, like, oh, you got to be authentic. Um, I don't think you need to be raw and honest about everything because some stuff is private and some stuff is 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 meant to be kept, you know, be- between you and your family or, or whatever the case may be. But you got to be authentic. You got to, you know, really relate that we're all human. We all have flaws. We all have uh, the weakness. You know, we have two two things inside of us, the weakness and we have the, uh, the inner advocate. And, and the weakness can also be called the inner critic, whatever you want to call it. The inner critic or your weakness is a lot louder than your inner advocate. You know, that's just how we're designed. We're designed to, to seek comfort, not seek, you know, discomfort or struggle. And you, 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 you have to fight that feeling every single day, multiple moments throughout the day. You'll get into a negative thought process, you know what I mean? And that inner critic, it gets very loud. And you need to understand that there's two sides. You know what I mean? There, at, at any given moment, moment, you can change your, your frequency, your thought process, and, and turn that inner advocate up and perform actions that will will progress you forward, not pull you backwards. Because I, I believe we, we grow mentally and physically every day. And if you don't grow, you decay. So like, there, there's no, there really is no staying the same. Uh, you know, every day, you can put yourself in a process in a, in a spot to grow or to decay. And, you know, sometimes it's not always physical. Like people are like, oh, well, you know, you can't, you can't grow every day. I'm like, well, that's true. So sometimes, you know, you, you pull back on the physicality side of it, but you can, you can say, I'm going to read 50 pages out of this book, or I'm going to, you know, do X, Y, and E. Like there's other ways to challenge yourself, you know, that aren't running or working out or, doing schoolwork or working on your business. Like there, there's other ways to, to make the day a win. And, and that's the philosophy I live by is, is stacking the wins and being, you know, extremely pl- proud of every win I do. There's, you know, it's big or small. <laughs> yeah, it, it doesn't, obviously it's not me finishing a hundred mile race or me finishing a, a smoke diver program, but it's still, it's up. I've, I've, I, I put it up there and it makes me feel better. And it, it puts me in the headspace of progression right? Progress, forward movement. Yeah, it's I'm that not, 1%. Yeah, I tell everyone, man, we don't want perfection. We want progress. Yeah. Right? We just need to move forward. That's that's all we need. And uh, yeah, man, so it's one of those things. Um, it's just, it's just crazy. But uh, you yeah. You talked earlier about before being allowed to be in a tribe in the fire department and business and whatever, like that you have to show that you bring value to that tribe. Right. So, and this is where I kind of want to dig a little bit just because I'm, I'm interested in your course. Obviously I don't want you to give away stuff for free, but we have talked about the, the whole concept of giving as much value as possible. So 
let's do a bit of like role play, if you will. So I'm TJ, I'm showing up and let's just call me fat TJ, right? I'm, I'm showing up, I am pushing 300 pounds and without obviously giving all your business secrets away, how would you approach me? I'm like, hey, Julian, listen, I want to become a firefighter. I feel like I'm super fat. I feel like I'm out of shape. Can you help me out? Okay. <laughs> you So you, you want me to tell you what I would say or how, how I would handle this? Yeah, how, how you're going to handle it, how you're going to how you're going to talk to me. And and if you want to give me a glimpse of, of what your program is going to be, I want to give the listeners an idea of like a little teaser because I want them to look at yourself. I want them to see what, what they can get out of it. And if you yeah, can give I, them a little teaser, might as well get them started well, that way. The first, thing, the first thing I would do is ask TJ. I would say, why do you want to be a firefighter? So it's always been in my family. It's something that 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 my my dad did and, and my grandfather did. And um, I just, I, I want to make them proud and I want to continue that tradition. And I think it's cool to serve my community. Okay, awesome, cool. Have you served your community in any other aspect before in your life? Well, I mean, I don't think so. I went to school and we had to do like volunteer hours, but I don't, I don't think that really counts as much as, as helping others and saving lives. Okay, cool. So then I would, you know, kind of dig into the aspect of like what you've done as work growing up. Um, and I would basically cultivate some confidence that you have what it takes to be a firefighter, right? Everybody has what it takes to be a firefighter if they want it, right? Mm -hmm. So after that, um, I would say, all right, you know, the first thing I need to know is what your, what does your fitness look like right now? How much do you weigh? And we go from there. Uh, everybody's different. So, uh, if you said fat TJ, so if you're fat, how fat are you? Are you like, are you like country boy fat? Like you can still work wrong. <laughs> Bro, that's different. Like this is, this is real TJ, like country boy, like the, yeah, they, they're, they might've been in like sports illustrated, but those dudes can work. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. You can work obviously, but, but let's you, just you say, wanna... you know, that I'm back to being fat TJ. So I, yeah, like I, um, I, I eat a lot of Cheetos and I, I don't like what I see when I look in the mirror. Okay, cool. So we'd have to distinguish, do we have to prepare you for, do we have to prepare you to get prepared for fire school or do you have to prepare you to go to fire school? Cause there's two different things. Um, uh, and I would really assess that through, through your assessment. So I would say, listen, this is this is what we're going to do. We're going to get you on a custom program where the fitness program is going to be tailored to your current situation, right? And if we need to prepare you to get prepared to go to fire school, this process is going to be probably three to five months. If we're going to prepare you to go to fire school, you know, it's going to probably be three months, right? You might be able to do it two, depending on your fitness level curve. So everybody is is individually different. Um, the, the, the biggest thing from my program that's different from everybody else's, um, is I will ensure your success as long as you give me three things, you know, dedication, commitment, and then obviously sacrifice. So those three things are, are what I need from you. And I'm going to give you everything I have. I'm going to give you the appropriate nutrition plan, right? We're going to, I'm going to teach you how to eat the right foods. That's going to fuel your performance. It's going to fuel your mindset, right? We're going to get you on a disciplined, like habitual schedule where you're going to prioritize your fitness, you're going to prioritize your training so that it gets done, right? Because that's the biggest misconception is, oh, well, I just need to get on a program. No, you need to fix your habits and you need to fix your priorities what you need it. because that is what's going to lead you to long-term success. It's not just getting on a program because I can give you a program for two months and then after that, you go back to your normal routine and habits and now you're useless. Right. So my, my, my program is not just to get you in shape. My program is to change your mindset to forever adopt these practices and be successful in life along with the fire service. Are you going to get in shape to, for the fire academy? Yes. Are you going to lose weight? Yes. Are you going to understand you know, how to eat the right foods, how to eat bad foods at the right time? Yes. Are you going to have a mindset that you're going to be more confident, that you're going to stop doubting yourself, you're going to stop being negative? Yes. I'm going to hold that standard. I'm going to explain to you how the, the power of the spoken word works, right? Um, so it, it's a whole thing, man. People, people come to me, you know, I've got this buddy, he just sent me an email. He just, uh, finished the Academy with Las Vegas. And, uh, you know, he said, Hey man, you, I came to you for fitness, but you changed my life. And, and that's, that's, that's the prepared fire program. Um, you know, it's, it's more than just fitness, 
right? Fitness is the gateway to success, confidence, many things, but it's more than that. It's deeper than that, right? I'm, I'm here to help people change, not just get fit. That makes sense. That's very service level. Um, you know, you could you could really do your own research and get fit. Honestly, you don't even need to do research. It's pretty simple. You need to run every day. You need to do push-ups, sit-ups, and air squats. If you did a hundred of each of those exercises on top of running half a mile to a mile every single day for about two and a half months to three months, you would be physically ready for fire school. It's boring, right? There's no structure, but I just gave you, I just gave you there, there's there's your training plan. Right. Perfect. Right. Now that's not my program. My program is custom. My program is through my years of experience. Um, I'm able to create workouts and create a plan where I'm actually targeting certain muscles or we're targeting certain aerobic system, targeting certain systems that are going to affect your stamina and stuff like that. Um, and that's just through the experience of exercising for the last nine years of uh, being a firefighter, of what works and what doesn't. Uh, so, and, and also depending on the person and what, what stage they're in, right, uh, I offer two different programs. One program is a hybrid athlete program. The other program is a fire academy prep, right? The hybrid athlete program, we're going to get you to the gym. Where the fire academy prep, you're not going to be in the gym. You don't need to be in the gym if you're going to fire school. Like we we need to build other systems. Uh, you know, it, doing barbell curls is not going to help you in fire school. I promise you. So, <laughs> uh, but people don't understand that. You know, and and it, and one thing is like I, I get it all the time. Oh, what are you doing? Oh, I go to the gym every day. All right, well, do me a favor. Go do my physical assessment test, which um, is a, a, an assessment on your push ups, sit ups, air squats, and your mile run. So we need to see how many of those exercises you can do in two minutes at a time, right? So you, you set a time for two minutes, you do the push-ups, the sit-ups, do squats, and then you do um, the run for time. Uh, and it, it's crazy how people go to the gym every day, but they can't run a mile under 12 minutes. They can't do more than 20 push-ups, and they can't do more than 30 sit-ups. You know, and that's, that's entry. Like, that's, I, I don't even think you can get out of middle school with those numbers. And, and, and just basic... <laughs> You know what I mean? So we, we let's let's pump the brakes here because, and that's another thing too is just because you're strong doesn't mean you're physically fit. Like there's two different things, right? right? Uh, the guys that are in the gym. The other day I saw this guy. He was pressed. Like he carried a lot of mass. He carried a lot of space. And the guy jumped on the pull-up bar and he couldn't do five pull-ups. You know what I mean? And I'm like, you're that big, but you can't do five pull-ups. That's it's a little worrisome. So. I never want to be that way. I want to be functional as well as I want to always carry a physique that I'm proud of. So fat TJ is now going to be running every day and doing push-ups, sit-ups and air squats to get ready to go to the fire Academy. Right. So, so yeah, we, we got a good, a good glimpse, a good intro. And, um, obviously you go way more in depth and getting reviews like the guy, like the one from, from your buddy from Vegas that speaks volumes as to what your program can do. Like, that's got to feel good, right? And he's not the only one. He's just the, the recent one that, that got hired with a really big department that I had to really, like, sit back and be like, wow, like, this is this is awesome. And and and, and my buddy, his name's Dane, um, that, that dead guy hired, he he had a rough going, man. It took him about seven months. It took, it took him, and, and when, when I talk to him and I talk to everyone, I tell him, I say, hey, are you in a rush to get hired? And if they say yes, I explain to them, I, I, I give them the reality of the truth. It's not going to happen quickly. I go, you need that frame of thought. That way, if it does, great. But if it doesn't, we're still pushing. We're still working. You know, he volunteered. He went to ENT school. He went to fire school. Um, he was just getting into medic school. And, you know, I had just talked to him so before the new year. And he was like, I don't know, man. I don't do anything wrong. But, hey, dude, sometimes it just takes... It just takes time. It takes you to go to interviews a couple times. Like, it's not you're doing anything wrong. You just need to grow. And, uh, you know, sometimes it's just, this is how life is. And, and the other day he sent me, he sent me that message. And I'm like, this is, this is awesome. You know what I mean? So yeah, it doesn't, the, the timeline should not matter to you. The, the question is, do you want it? And if the answer is yes, then let's start the process. The process is more important than the, the end product always. Yeah, get those reps in, and and at that time horizon, you keep getting those those reps in, and in a long enough time frame, there will be success. Absolutely. So, speaking of a long enough time horizon, what's in the future for Julian and for Prepare to Fight Fire? Uh for me personally, man, honestly, I just I want to become 
uh, the best firefighter I can be. Very cliche, but um, there's a lot of classes I want to take. Uh, you know, when I'm eligible to promote, I'm going to promote. Um, I really want to pour into my department and, and give them everything that I have mentally, physically, emotionally. Um, I want to really change the wellness aspect of my department. And uh, that's another thing is just because you're physically fit doesn't mean you're physically or mentally well. Two different things. So um, from the standpoint of Julian, you know, I just, there's a lot of, uh, I haven't even touched this or, or reached the surface of becoming the best firefighter or the best firefighter coach. You know what I mean? I think, I think as a coach, you need to uh, explore and achieve so much that way your 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 basis of uh, your your basis of instruction is is so wide teach and coach anyone anyway, you know what i mean mm-hmm. and and that comes through applying yourself and putting yourself in situations where you're going to grow putting yourself in situations where failure is possible putting yourself in situations where you know you understand being in gear three times a week working out you know like you you you, you get it you understand it's tough it hurts uh, and i think as as a coach that's super important. So, uh, and everybody I onboard, I explained to them, like I, I found recently a lot of success due to the fact that I'm living for the longest time. I wasn't living what I was coaching or preaching. And I, I was, I was kind of a fraud. I'm not gonna lie. I was kind of a fraud, kind of half in, half out. And I'm very hard on myself. Um, but now I'm in alignment. Um, you know, I'm in alignment. It's funny how life works that way. I'm in alignment with what I'm preaching. And I live that life. So I can authentically say with conviction, like this is, this works, trust the process. I'm doing it. You know what I mean? I'm not just telling you, I posted a workout today on Instagram. Like I did it. You know, I, I looked at my time. Like, oh man, I don't want to share this time. It's not impressive. I'm like, it doesn't matter. I did the workout. The time will get better over time. Like that's not the, it's not the purpose. That's not, not the point. Right. And, and the biggest thing I've learned too, through prepared to fight fire is I'm not, I'm not the message. I'm just a messenger. Right. I'm, I've been given the opportunity to help people with a big audience. And if you want help, you come, you come to me and I'll help you. and I'll give you everything I have. Um, and the other day, it's funny. This person asked me, well, why do you charge money? There's so many programs for free. I go, they are, th- th- there are plenty of programs for free. The reason why I charge money is two reasons. One, I, I value my time. And two, you now have invested in yourselves. Welcome yep. to the game. Of, welcome to the game of life. You now invest in yourself and you're not just going to waste my time or waste your own time. Yeah. Um, and, you know, as far as prepared to fight fire goes, I want to be the number one firefighter coach in the world. That's the goal. That's as high as it is. I, I believe everybody out there should set goals and my goals are very audacious and uh, we, we won't stop until we achieve them. And if we don't achieve them, it doesn't really matter because uh, along the way, I'm going to work towards that. So, yeah, I it, as we're getting ready for closing, I have a couple more things, but I want to touch on what you said about having to pay for something and invest in yourself. I caught a lot of flack when I started selling on my other business courses and manuals on how to work leather, how to make things out of leather, because people said the same thing. Why should I pay if I can get that information out there for free? And those are not the people we're looking for. We're looking for the ones, like you said, that are ready to invest in themselves, the ones who are literally putting their money where their mouth is. Because once you have made that financial investment and you realize, oh God, I have to work X amount of overtime hours to make up what I just spent, you're going to be so much more focused and you are going to pay so much more attention and actually put in the work because now you are committed and you are invested in it. And and that's, that's important to realize. I can look at how many, however many workouts I want online for free, I can find a thousand if I do the right Google search. But until I actually either sign that check or swipe that card, there's nothing that's kind of like pushing me to complete them. No, no, absolutely not. And, and that's another thing too is people are like, well, if you need somebody to help you go to fire school, you're A, B, or C. You're, you shouldn't go. It's like, that's funny because last time I, before you become a doctor, you get taught by other doctors. <laughs> right. Like you, you know what I mean? I just, I, I, and don't you pay to go to med, med school? Like, that's not free. Mm-hmm. Um, don't you, don't you have to apply and actually like not get paid anything to go to residency? Okay. So it's, 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 it's very similar. It's just people, people get caught up in the wrong things. And it's just like, listen, man, like, no, like not everybody needs it. But the people who do and the people that are willing to do the work, like, why are you bashing them? Like, 
Yeah. When, when they're more successful than you are, don't ask why. You know what I mean? Um, and, and that's the thing, too, is the biggest misconception is that I'm going to do the work for you. Like, no, I'm not going to do the work for you. What I'm going to do is to show you the blueprint. And you have to now fill out the blueprint. When I showed you the blueprint, instead of creating a painting that you think is correct, and then you start from scratch, you're like, fuck, that's not right. Let's, let's start over, you know, where I'm going to show you the correct painting. Like, hey, this is how I got here. This is the steps I took. These are the mistakes I made. This is what you need to do. And it's super successful. So, uh, but it's, it's, it's great, man. I, I think social media is a, a powerful tool. I think we have to respect, you know, the, 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 the reach you have on it. Also the, the target that it brings on, you You know what I mean? Because there's more haters than there are supporters always have been, always will be like, and that's the same thing with these elite programs. The same thing with accomplishing audacious goals is once you start doing these things and become more accomplished, people expect more out of you and they give you less leeway, less slack. So, um, you know, I, I take that, I don't take that lightly. I don't take that, that, that weight on my back lightly at all. Uh, I always strive to be the best, to do the best. You know what I mean? My goal is never to, uh, you know, do somebody like wrong or, you know, not give somebody everything I have. My goal is to always do that. But there's, there's a very fine line between, like we talked about, I'm going to always give value, but I'm also going to present myself in the, in the position where the people who want help, I'm here to help you, you know? And I think everybody needs that. Dude, I have thoroughly enjoyed this conversation. I try to go through as, as I talk to people and write down solid one liners. And I am running out of paper because you've dropped so much good knowledge on us. Where can people find you? Um, you can find me at Prepared by Fire on Instagram and Facebook. And then, um, yeah, just if you guys ever need anything, uh, if, if, if anything, just hit the follow button. Um, if you want more free content and value, I, I, I just created an email that I'm sending out three three to four times a week. Um, so we're, we're sending mindset, fitness, nutrition, training, and uh, workout on my email list, uh, as well as the stuff I post on social media. So um, I think the emails is, is pretty... Uh, interpersonal because if you do have a question you know you can you can email me right back kind of the same thing as instagram facebook but um you know i, I like emails because i like reading that first and i don't have to see the distraction of you know other people's stories or other people posting it's, it's an email. You're, you're actually growing your mind you're not just aimlessly scrolling on instagram so uh, but yeah uh, instagram or facebook compared to fire fire and you know tj thank you again for this this, this opportunity it was great uh, I appreciate you giving me a, a voice and uh, 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 put me in a place to, you know, send a message of, you know, mediocrity is is not okay. Like you're, everyone's special. I believe that. You know, there's there's this mantra now, like, uh, you know, you're not special. No, you are special, but you have to create that special person. Hey guys, hope you enjoyed that episode with Julian. Like I said at the beginning, the guy is a mover and a shaker in the biz. But most importantly, he's an awesome influence and he's inspired me a lot. I'm I'm really thankful for all the talks that I've had with him, the um the business talk and (laughs) and everything else that comes in between. So awesome dude. I'm so glad that I was able to bring him to you. And now let's get down to business. As you know, at the end of every podcast. We give a shout out to our patrons and we're trying something new where instead of doing first name and the first letter of their last name, we're just going to say where they're from. Not, not like their full address. That'd be kind of creepy. But without further ado, special shout out on the podcast to Manuel or Manuel from Pendleton, Pendleton, Oregon. Clayton from Elizabeth, Colorado. How close is that to Denver? Uh, Nakota from Westmoreland, Tennessee. Chris from Reston, Virginia. That's kind of close to me. Jared from Sewell, New Jersey. 
Stephen from Luling, Louisiana, Luling. Anyway, yeah, Stephen from Louisiana. Justin from Rapid City, South Dakota. Ryan from Northern, North, Northern, whoa, Norton Shores, Michigan. Ryan, you really tripped me up, bro. Goodness. Brendan from, oh God, Mayaka City, Florida. Florida's always good for those wacky names. I can say that because I lived there for six years of my life. And last but certainly not least, Kyle from Mansfield, Texas. See, that was an easy one to pronounce. For real, guys and gals, thank you so much for your support. It means the world. We're doing some great things on the Patreon. We're getting really close to that number of patrons that we need to create that fund for um, for firefighters who are going through rehab, who are going to any sort of medical treatment, and who are just falling on hard times, and that way we can help their families. And I have a couple more things in store for the patrons, like the ones who answer the poll. And a couple more things for the rest of the community. I don't really want to say too much. I want to build up the hype. So stay tuned. Go check out the Patreon. Join KeepThePromise.com. Thank you so much. Be safe. See you soon. Bye. Hey, everyone. It's TJ here from Keep the Promise. As you know, this podcast is all about helping firefighters become more resilient and well-rounded so that they can be a force for good within their fire department and their community. But today, I want to talk to you about something that's just as important and that is supporting firefighters who are going through tough times. When one of our fellow firefighters is off work because they have to go to the Center for Excellence, they have to go to rehab, they have mental health issues, or they have other health issues, it really takes away their support system and it wreaks havoc on their finances and their family's finances. And many times these brothers and sisters are left to struggle alone away from their support system and the people who love them without the resources they need to recover. That's why I'm setting a bold new goal, and that is to reach 150 total patrons on Patreon so that we can start a fund to help firefighters and their families during these challenging times. And I need your help to make it happen. With your support on Patreon, we'll be able to provide financial assistance to firefighter families who are battling things like addiction, depression, and cancer. We're going to help alleviate the financial strain that can come with being away from the fire department so that our brothers and sisters can focus on healing and recovering. Now, reaching 150 total patrons is a big goal, but I believe that we can do it together. And when we do, we'll be able to make a real difference in the lives of those who serve and protect alongside us. So, if you're not already a patron, I invite you to join us today. Head over to joinkeepthepromise.com and sign up today. Again, that is joinkeepthepromise.com. And if you already are a patron, thank you so much for your support. You'll be receiving some exclusive rewards and perks as a way of saying thanks. Together, let's show our fellow firefighters that we've got their back just like they always have ours. Thank you for listening. Let's get started with the episode.